You guys got to use stamps.com. I've been telling you about this for a very long time. Christopher Titus uses stamps.com. He's going to tell you about it in a second. Don't go to the post office anymore. It's absurd. You can save a lot of time. You could be watching one of 11 Christopher Titus specials. The guy never stops with all the time you save not going to the post office. Stamps.com, everything you do right from your desk, buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter or package. They're going to send you a digital scale. I want a digital scale. Oh, I have one. You know why? I use stamps.com. Do you have a digital scale? No? I'm cooler than you. Digital scales are cool. Get one. You'll never have to go to the post office again. I use stamps.com. I encourage you to use stamps.com again. It's just cool and fun, and I like making my own postage. It makes me feel like I work for the feds, a government job, like Christopher Titus's mom and that'll come later in the show. You're going to dig it. Use my last name more, M-O-H-R, for the special offer. No risk trial. $110 bonus offer that includes a digital scale and up to $55 free postage. Don't wait. Go to stamps.com before you do anything else. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage. Type in more, M-O-H-R. Stamps.com. Enter more. Hey, how would you like to score a dream job in the sports and fitness industry? Christopher Titus is... Matty Boy, did you know Christopher Titus... His fiance, who's marrying in August, is a bodybuilder, female bodybuilder, ripped to shreds. She probably had a trainer at some point in her life. We'll ask him. Trainers from the National Academy of Sports Medicine. You know what they're doing right now? They're dream jobs. Earn great money doing a job you'll love. Certified personal trainers are in high demand. The National Academy of Sports Medicine will help make your dreams come true. They guarantee, this is cool, that you will land the job within 90 days of earning your certification, or you get your money back. At, for all you college graduates out there beating the bushes trying to get a job in the corporate world, forget it. Teach people how to do preacher curls. Get in there. Get started with a free 14-day sneak peek of their fast, fun, easy online program, usatrainer.com. If you don't know how to spell that, you should not have a computer. usatrainer.com. usatrainer.com. I think this is cool. Go check it out. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. If you wanna battle with either that you will that you're wrong. You know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Yes, yes, it's happening. Christopher Titus, welcome back, my friends. Moriers and Uncle Dan, just over there in case he's a sniper, wants to do some sniper jokes. I am a sniper. Sniper of what? I don't know. Chris, say hi, please. I, what's going on, people? I, I finally get to the camp. I met your dog. Your little dog is really cute. Not, not, not your kind of dog. I would think this is not Jay's dog. Jay would have a big pit bull, scary. Attitude. I had a Rottweiler named Shirley, right? And then uh, got tired of picking up that sized waist. Yes, it's so it's small. Lot. But when you have a little dog, everybody automatically goes like, oh, it's all like man card talk. I have two Yorkies. They're the best. They're the best, and they're bad. They they have no idea. They're literally five inches tall. They think they can take on anything. This one does. This is the most <laughs> passive dog. Mabel <laughs> will roll over and just pee on herself, and the dogs literally think she's a toy, and they just bite her to see if she squeaks. <laughs> but uh, everybody will uh, be happy that you're here because you and I have been trying to do this probably about six months. Yeah, yeah. And you've had you've had we have you've had family issues, and you, you know, left town, and, and then I left town. And we and don't really like each other in a lot of ways. That's not true at all. <laughs> it's not true, you're right? Bitch. <laughs> last I just was... watched you last night on uh, Monk. My girl's a big fan of Monk. I and was you're... fat Monk. You were on I was Monk. Like two twelve. Your girl's really? like a bodybuilder, right? Yeah, she's a, yeah, she's a fitness competitor and meet... a comic actually. She is a comic. Yeah. How do you meet somebody with the nickname of Bombshell Ray? I I, I made it up. We started doing the podcast. and I made it because she just looks like this. She's five eleven. She's got. She's got. Bring, bring a picture of her. She's she's five eleven. Oh, she's did. smoking hot, and she's she she was in. Two, she's done two fitness competitions, and she looks like a bombshell. She just she's got that old school kind of like you put her in some red heels and lipstick. Sorry, I just went away. No, <laughs> but, go ahead. But she smoked. She's, how do you, she's but a how bombshell. Do you, but how do you uh, put a twelve pack on? You you're going. You you were painting a picture, right? And I was trying to. 
See Lo- how the twelve pack abs morphed into your Rockwell esque <laughs> vision. <laughs> and I, I got Rockwell, divorced. I, I had Rockwell a raging was, cunt I, of an ex wife. So I this is be clear. Rockwell was bleeding. Okay, okay Rockwell was bleeding. Well, Love Is Evil was my third, four, third, fourth special, third yeah. special, and that was about my my horrible divorce. My divorce. I was with this girl 15 years, and I went through. And, and by the way, the smartest thing I ever heard was something you did at the at the at the mediation table. Uh, I heard a story that you did something I wish I would have done because it cost me everything I ever earned in Titus. I heard. Can I tell you what I heard? Yeah, go I to, heard it cost you two million dollars. Two and a half. Two point five million dollars, wow. and there is not a piece of vagina on the planet worth that. I'm no. telling you, and gentlemen, if you what have about, a lot of money, get some paperwork signed. Let me just say two words. Yeah. Amanda Bynes, you don't pay 2.5 to hit that? <laughs> yeah, well. The whole well, time. Look at Maddie Boy. If the exception whole time, to the rule. Exception to the rule. Right, if the whole time she got the one eye closed. <laughs> yeah, exception to the rule, my friend. I got, so, yeah, it cost me two and a half. And then, uh, and, and just, it was everything I've earned. Everything I earned, I kind of had to start over. And then I met this girl, and she was like, she was great. And it's weird because I still have no trust. I heard what you did, though. I heard, I heard you just put open the checkbook at the, at the mediation table and just pushed it across and said, you can have all of it, but I never want to talk to you again. Uh, not exactly. Is it close? Am I in the uh, arena? It's how it wound up, and we have to talk because we co-parent. Mm. So we have to talk, and right. we're very civil. You guys and sign, though, don't you? You don't actually talk. We sign. <laughs> very, oh, <God laughs> yeah, exactly. Damn. Uncle Dan, people <laughs> you have missed semaphore, you. Semaphore, you learn I hold the flags <laughs> up. I get on the roof. I light the chimney. Let, their, let them know there's a new pope. I'll pick them up Thursday. <laughs> Good move. Here's the thing. Uh, I said the judge, the mediator, was super cool, and she said, what is it worth to you to just be done with this? Because this could stretch forever. Oh. And I said uh, half a million dollars, and she goes, that's funny. That's funny. Like really? Look me right in my eye and goes, that's funny is the word I would use. Funny. Oh. And so I go, what? And she goes, you got to understand something. This person has to live the rest uh-huh. of their life off of this and this. And then we came oh. up with a number. It was 1.4. Oh. And then the judge I'm literally, said. I, I'm going to have blood in my know. urine after this conversation. Look, what we've talked about, I'm going to have blood in my but urine. But here's what it is. But you're done. You bought her out. Uh, no, actually. Uh, I'll tell you. Finish, <laughs> finish it up. I'll tell you. So the judge said to me. Are you con- you were, it's half the length of the marriage, and right. then the judge says, the mediator judge lady says, can you make this money in three years? That's what it boils down to. And I just pictured every comedy club in the world, single, I can just get on the road. I go, yeah. yeah. And she goes, now, I, she's nodding her head yes. I can't tell you this is what I would do. And she's <laughs> nodding her head yes like this. And she goes, I can't say if you were my son, you'd be a fool not to do this if you were my son. I can't say that legally, nodding her head up and down. I'm like, all right, I get it. Wow. So I signed. I left with a leased car, and I kept the house. It's always good to have a mediator with mime skills that could actually talk two different languages to you at the same time. I don't know why we had to do the rope thing. <laughs> yeah, the way, After the, the I wind. signed. And then I had to walk in the wind. I don't understand. But yeah, I, <laughs> I don't why. I'm done walking in the wind. Wind's at my back now. I'm done. <laughs> right. So what happened with me is that my girl uh, used to work for two attorneys, and it's great. I have this girl who's smoking beautiful, super smart. Uh, she cares about me. She's literally got the. She's got the heart. What comes to me, she's got the heart of a, of a, like a rescue dog. Like she's one of those little safety dogs. Well, that helps. Yeah, yeah. And, she's a rescue. Lady. And, and I just keep waiting for the nightmare to happen. So she used to work for two attorneys. My attorneys suck so bad. I'm actually suing my attorneys right now. They suck so bad that at one you point, you and OJ, huh? You and OJ. It's horrible. These guys, dude. These guys went in. I had evidence. I had a mob photo. My ex said I beat her. Said I beat the kids because yeah. I found her cheating on me. Right. So I had a mob photo of basically of my, my kid's preschool graduation two days before she said I threw her down the stairs twice. She's holding a photo at my at my two days after that. She's holding a photo at my daughter's uh, preschool graduation because in L.A. you got to have the preschool graduation yeah. and the limo. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is my daughter. She's Maria. holding the picture with the pamphlet with the date on it. Like proof of life, like pre- and she's wearing a low cut dress, heels on, looks fine. I go to my attorneys. I go, listen, this is right here. This is there's no, this is the dates on it. She's holding it, and uh, he goes, I don't want to ring that bell. Except she was sitting next to me, ringing it the whole time. So the judge finally said that judge just didn't buy anything I said. My attorneys put all the evidence, out and they they said I owed her. Do you don't believe this? They said I owed her. 200 and something grand. On top of everything else she took, I owed another 200 grand. They had to pay for $2,000 a month with interest back to 07. Okay, now, and I went home and I curled up like a little bitch on the bed, like in a fetal position, and I sobbed like a baby. And I said, there's no, there's no, like, like visions of guns going through my head. Just, it was horrible. I'm going to go to the yeah. mall and play Duck, Duck, Goose. That's what I'm going to do because it's over. With so a what, bat. Yeah, with, yeah. So what happens is, is that my girlfriend starts looking at the law 
and we filed this thing called reconsideration, and we re, you can reintroduce all the evidence. Because my, my, my lawyers had actually turned in evidence. Well, hold on. You're, this is already like a murder trial. It's and horrible. Uncle Dan it's, said like OJ, and it was like – it was, you know, Uncle Dan. I can tell you, you kind of grounded out the second base with that one. wasn't yeah. very fun. But you know what? It became salient after the fact. Maybe you got a high pitch count on that one. But here's the thing: like reconsider. It's a fucking divorce, Chris. Like, just cut the check and walk in the other direction. I, I tried. Set it down. No, no, no. This was re- with the court. This is reconsideration with the court. See, I had to. Re- I had fired my attorneys. Says. I had to fire the attorneys and reintroduce all the evidence. I did that, and the judge starts out like this. The judge, it's just me. I'm representing myself now at this point. Which and you know, they, the by the way, they love that. They love what you're... better way to let a judge know you've got your act together <laughs> by firing shoot. your attorneys oh, and yeah. then show up. No, I got this. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> well, but they... law school, no, like JFK <laughs> Jr. taking an airplane through the fucking fog to Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> exactly. You decide to wade the uh, uh, I'm L.A. A Kennedy. County. I got this. I got this. <laughs> that is, bar exam. That, you know that's what he said. So the good news is Rachel worked for two attorneys. So she wrote this. Rachel. She wrote this brief that was like exactly like it was better than any attorney's brief that my attorneys were, were just socked ass. And it was better than – and they turned in the judge read it. The judge actually read it. And all I had to do really is – because she did all the work. All I really had to do was stand up and go I, – I started out like this because um, he basically gave – she owed me like 10 grand or whatever. And he didn't give her a payment plan, but he gave me a payment plan of this crazy amount. And I got up and I started out like this. Okay, not only is the judge pissed already, I'm representing that. Here's how I started. Your Honor, you have violated my 14th Amendment rights. Of the, <laughs> I started out with Constitution. And the dude looks at you. Time out. Uncle Dan, do you know what the 14th Amendment is? Uh, which one is that? I right asked, it's after arms? 13. <laughs> <laughs> right to bear arms is two. And 14, I think. <laughs> what is yeah. 14? Yeah, in court. What, during a divorce. <laughs> equal pr- equal do you know pr- what it is? Equal protection under the law. Like they can't, they can't say if you're fighting. They can't if you get in an assault case and you guys are both found like for assault, right? And it's even. They can't put you in jail for six months and let him go free. That's like not equal protection under the law. So because she was a woman, he didn't give her a payment plan. So I said, "You violate my Fourteenth Amendment rights under the Constitution." And and I'm waiting. Oh, I'm boy. literally, dude, and I'm waiting for a gun to come out because I know all the judges supposedly have guns. I'm waiting for a bat. Get him out. The judge just looks at me and he goes, "Okay." And, and 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 I'm like, all right. And I'm a comic, right? So I just say, let me finish the bit. So I just keep, <laughs> I just keep going. And I, I list ten or fifteen things that, that he got wrong, and the evidence was in front of him. And he and he and at one point, my ex goes, this wasn't the same judge though. Same judge. And this really? guy hated. And this guy oh, hated man. my guts to the point we thought he was sleeping with my ex. It was this guy. Anything I said, shut up, Mr. Titus. Like from doing the trial. The guy get, get done, and the guy goes. Uh, he goes. Uh, my my ex goes. You want to do it? Listen to this. And he goes. I'm listening to him right now. You can be quiet. And I'm like, what did I say? I said something. Something I said rattled this guy. Because and I found out later that reconsideration means you're going to appeal. If you go to appeal and the judge made mistakes, the judge the, the judge is basically being judged by a bunch of other judges. So it's not. not so, so what happened? Yeah. So what happened? The buck has to stop there. Yeah. He basically was like, okay, and he said, and he starts out and on record. He goes, your lawyers horribly misrepresented represented you in this case he goes the evidence he, they turned in checks that she'd forged that were black pages they and they turn them in like you really but i saw pictures of you on uh you know when you type in someone's name uh, and looking around yeah and you're like goofing off on a red carpet the good times you know you yeah, and the old you lady what, yeah you can't have a domestic violence scene on a red carpet it looks bad but you got one strike against you which is y- your background is so horrific right and your upbringing is so bananas yeah my dear listeners you Gotta just this will blow Carl above. That's nothing compared to what you're about to hear. So, and you, you, I've known you peripherally for a long time, and right. you and I have sat next to each other at auditions and stuff. Yeah, but you do like sort of seethe rage, even when you're not. <laughs> you're at you, like, like if do you Bill, get that, on, do you mm, get that a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good thing about this far with his hands. How far away? How far away your seat? He did goes. scoot. When I sat down, he did scoot yeah, a little over. The, yeah, you know. and it, like you're at rest is like a guy like a bar fight, like ready to go. <laughs> I, you know what? It, and that's my problem. I think in the industry is that like I, I am not that guy, but I come Legend, across. But you were that guy. One of my favorite showbiz stories of all time oh. is you saying to a network head, "Will you explain this to?" Uh, I will tell the story. You want me to tell the story? Yeah, I tell it on stage now. Actually, it's in my in my new special. I, I actually I took my own production company. We started my own production company. Filmed my last special on Comedy Central. Just bought it, so it has to come off the web now. It's coming off tonight. You won't be able to get it anymore. Comedy Central is going to air it. They actually bought it. Oh, this is great. Yeah, it's great news. It's great news. Yeah, um, so you can give all that money to the lady that earned it. 
<laughs> she did. She was gone already. So I met every her. Residual, now you you every residual check I get. Yeah, I don't get. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm done. Guess what happened? Not only that, but uh, but we actually filed my ex wouldn't. One more thing, just so because if, if you need some help. My ex refuses to get a job, so we had a thing called a Gavron warning put on her, which means you <laughs> get a job. Listen. I don't and need then, any help. I'm and done. Then, and then, we get along. Okay, good. Flags on the roof. And then, and then a Richmond order, and my alimony stopped as this, of three weeks Damian ago. You're not Damien Eccles. This isn't I'm West Temple Street. I'm telling you. I try to help every father that's been like, bent hey, over you know a table. What? And I'm going to do it. Listen, a, uh... let me call, let's call two people. So what happens, I'm sitting at a table. Now, you, you know, can I hit now, in my defense, if I have one, is uh, – You've been with network people. By the people. way, great title for a special. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great title in my for defense if I have in one. In my defense oh, if, if I, I have, have one. Yeah, yeah. You've sat with network people. Yeah. You know that most of them have never been on a stage, never written nothing. a script, never performed anything. <laughs> Buddy Hackey used to say to me, I'd say, I think they're wrong, and I think I'm right. And he'd say, of course you're right. They never walked the last 16 feet. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, yeah. they got just enough balls to go backstage and shake everyone's hand, but they can't go out there to the mic that's 16 feet. Oh, and you do it every favorites. night like it's nothing. Of course you're right. What are you going to do? And then you go in the next time, and you just nod and go, okay. Well, I didn't do that. That's my problem. Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> but my great seething, story comes from it. My seething rage part. So I've been working. I was, work, I was in the writer's room. <laughs> I was in there. <laughs> Just when Uncle Dan goes, a little bit, this much, yeah. with his hands. Yeah, I love it. Actually, with his hands, like a baby. I love you this right much. Here, right here. About 18 Uncle Dan goes, about this far away from my body, I feel it. And I guess I do. I guess I, I do. But I'm also really a nice guy. Like, I got your back. Like, if I'm, your, I got you, like, I'm the other guy, I'm too. Glad you want, you you want me around when something goes right because I don't have any issues jumping in. I have no issues jumping in. I like in. that. Um, so, so here's the thing. So I'm sitting at the table. I've been working for three years on the show, three seasons on the show. I was head writer on the show with, with Jack and Brian, and we were, I was doing 20-hour days. And the mistake is, is the show was called Titus. I was on it. And, I'm again, in my defense, if I have one, I was a vampire, dude. I was not. I was getting four hours of sleep. And then here's what my, my wife at the time. The show was about her. The girl that was in the show, it was about her. And – if I wrote I had to kiss that girl, my weekend was a nightmare. So I'd work all week on the show, go home. I, I read the script for next week. Oh, my God. Did you kiss? You're kissing that bitch. You want to kiss? You want to fuck her, don't you? And I'm like, I don't, I'm just trying to write a funny show. And, and we're actually boyfriend and girlfriend on the show. And I and he's like, oh, my God. You just want to fuck her. That's all. That happened every weekend. So I'd come in on Monday beat, and then we'd work 20-hour days. So You should have written a scene. Chris and Penelope shake hands hello for their date. <laughs> yeah. And that would have been like the hook of the show. Like, this he guy pat, Titus, he pats her shoulder. He's such an odd job. He only <laughs> shakes hands on dates. I love this show. Uh, and I would live with her. So, so what happened was know. is that I'm done. I'm actually done. I'm actually done. And I'm sitting in a meeting for the third season. And Fox had four presidents in the three years we were there. Yeah. Doug Herzog, brilliant guy. Love him. Great Action. Guy. Without, w- yeah. Without, family guy. Without Doug. Family guy. Doug, you know what's great about Doug? He's one of the great executives in this town. Because if it's working, he goes like this. Keep doing that. And then if it goes wrong, he goes, okay, well, let's fix this. And that's it. If it's working, he he's doesn't He's a neighborhood go- guy. The best way I could explain Doug is he's just a neighborhood guy. Yeah. yeah so he's I'm a like- guy from your neighborhood that's running a network. And he'll go, ah, I don't know. Yeah, or he'll go, hey, is it working? Yeah, what's the numbers? Good, fuck it, keep going. That's what he said. He, we, we, we went in and said, hey, we want to do the ad campaign for, to, for the debut of Titus. And he goes, all right. <laughs> we gave him like three ideas. He goes, okay, go ahead and do that. We debuted with a 20 share. That's what we debuted with. Jeez Louise. Yeah, the that, good old days when sitcoms got big shares. Yeah, when there was people um, that spoke English. The point is this. <laughs> what I'm saying is that I'm sitting in this, in this table in a big, big meeting. Okay, and you tell me what you would have done, Hunk. I'm sitting in a big meeting. I'm sitting down tired. New network president, woman this time, sits across from me. And Darman and Greg had just, Darman and Greg had just, their ratings had gone up like five points because they had cheated on each other. They had actually, Kevin Sorbo had governed, and they had, they had the love triangle. And what they, people don't understand if you don't, if you don't, Darman slept with Hercules? What? What? Darman slept with Hercules? Yes. Yes. I was I dating know, him. I don't know how I missed that. I it would have went up it was, five and a half points if I saw that. Well, shit. here's the thing I told him. I knew it was going to happen with the show. You can't um, do that. Just don't even entertain me. Keep going. <laughs> you can't fuck up. You can't fuck up a show like that. You have to keep the story right. You can't. Just tell me. I don't entertain. I'm just. I vomit words. Just keep no, going. No, but I want to okay. tell you. I, went to, I knew it was going to happen. Being a writer, I mean, I got a Writers Guild nomination for Titus. Being a writer, you can't say these two people, the yuppie and the hippie, get along and love each other and then have one of them fuck another guy. It, the, the show's over. Right. Okay. Okay. So what happens was we sit the network president sits down across and goes, I want you to split up Titus and Aaron and have them cheat on each other. And the ratings had just come out on Dharma and Greg. And I went, 
And I, I, it's, just, it's just a long pause. And I had two people next to me who ran shit with me. Like, if he was about to get in real bad trouble, wouldn't you jump in and try to stop him? Sure. Okay. So I'm not blaming them. You know, they could have stuck me in the neck with maybe, a pencil or something. That, you know, but they, they yeah, had number two pencils. They could have stuck me in the neck. But instead, they just sat there while I said this. I look at the network. Do you think for- they assumed you would have went, all right. They worked with me for three years. How can you? He's around me three minutes and he moves away. How can you work with me for three <laughs> years and not know? And, and, and how do you? It only how you took work, me three minutes. How do you work for me three years and not know I'm going to say something in, in the wrong thing? So somebody should just like a Barry Katz type should have been like, if I can interject real quick. Yeah, yeah. Before he says anything and ruins everything. I don't know if that's a great idea. You know, Chris is a brand. <laughs> Right, right. Instead, and, and I, by the way, it's my fault because I said it. One hundred percent, my fault. I look at the president. I go, "Do you even watch the show?" Because let me explain to you how this works. And I proceeded for the next three minutes to explain how the show worked to the network president in the big room at Fox with all the executives. I said, the first thing, I said, you can't split them up. The whole show is based on one premise. Two screwed up people together make a perfect couple who can survive anything. If you split them up and have them cheating each other, the entire premise of the show is gone. Not only that, but the audience won't trust them, hate their guts, and they're not being funny anymore. So guess what? We're not doing it. That's exactly pretty much how it went. Didn't swear right or nothing. That's all I said. And... uh and it was weird because I thought – I really did have this thought that, like, everybody was going to go, yeah, that's the way to tell the network president. <laughs> right on. <laughs> yeah. Say it, Titus. Preach. Good Times is filmed in front of a live <laughs> motherfucking <laughs> audience, y'all. Come on. But James. <laughs> if I'd have added a dynamite at the end, it may have broke the tension. <laughs> if I'd have just at the end went, dynamite. <laughs> then they'd have laughed and they said, oh, he was fucking with us. Yeah. But dead, you weren't. No, dead so silence. What was the response on the other side dead, of the yoke table? The dead silence. And the network president sitting across, looking directly across from me, and just goes, just says this. This is fine. Do what you want. That's exact. That's all that was said. She said it. Yep. The next day, all promo for the show. So I used to get these promo sheets, you know, because I was EPing on the show. I'd get these promo sheets to show how many commercials we got that week. The next week, one. Did you turn the faucet off on you? Oh, they just stopped it. Yeah, stopped it. And then how long after that was the show canceled? Uh, the ratings, the ratings stayed the same. We kept the audience, and then they moved. Then they were like, "Well, fuck that." Three months later, they moved us across from West Wing. Sundays at noon. That's always no, well. It was cro- West Wing post nine eleven. Right after nine eleven, they moved us across from West Wing, which yeah. was the number one show on television. Ratings dipped down, and they, they went for about like a month and a half, and then they started coming back up again. So this time it was like Saturday morning, three a.m. It was bad. It was bad. Well, I heard a story about you complaining about something in the net. Was it you? And the guy goes, "How about this? You're you're, you're canceled. How about?" That. No, that wasn't me. That, that wasn't, wasn't me. you? That wasn't me. I that did hear me. this, Fox. That was Uncle Dan. <laughs> Uncle Dan did this. Hey, uh, Squarespace, everybody, get a website. Do you have a website, Chris Titus? I do. ChristopherTitus.com. You can get everything there and uh, yeah, check it out. Squarespace is in the business of websites, all in one platform. Make it easy to create a professional website. Is your website cool or is it whack? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's great. Mine just got redone. <laughs> yeah. It's much better. Blog, portfolio, online store. You can buy that ChristopherTitus.com merch. Squarespace includes hosting, analytics, 24-7 support, even includes free domain name. But you can't use ChristopherTitus.com because he already had that one. Do we even know how websites work? Do we even know? Let me, let me explain to you how websites work. Go, go. He says across the table. To put a pencil Te- in my neck, me. would you? <laughs> Squarespace is great. With responsive design, your website automatically scales to fit perfectly on every device. Squarespace template. Each one has its own customized mobile view. $8 a month, standard plan. $16 a month for the unlimited plan, $24 for the unlimited plan, and the online store. You can sell those in my defense. If I had one t-shirts, you're going to have to patent that quick, yeah. bro. Uh, free trial, squarespace.com. When you're ready to purchase, click enter an offer code. Under pricing at checkout, use the offer code J6, J-A-Y-6 for 10% off. That's J-A-Y-6 and the number J-A-Y-6, yeah. Or go to fakemustache.com and click on the Squarespace banner on the More Stories page. Squarespace. Everything you need to create an exceptional website. Are you telling me that it's not just a website, uh, like a ser- service to get the domain names, but it also gives you a template to build your own website? Template, uh, unlimited uh, templates. Boy, you're good at this. And I like your <laughs> Christopher Titus podcast. Don't forget uh, to check that out. How about there's like a ton of drag and drop functionality. Really? All right. If you want to add a picture, you add an image block, and then you'll you just like – you drag the image from your desktop with Squarespace. So it's plug and play. Even a child could maybe do it. A, t- a child could definitely do it. And that price is so good. Well, free trial. You can't beat free. No, you can't. You can't, Christopher Titus. Well, Christopher if Titus. they gave money back to you, that's better than free. Well, and a little bit <laughs> and old school pops up. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. You know, you're it right. could be and a little better if I could just wet my beak on that. <laughs> 
Christopher Titus, your childhood, uh, I had a bucolic childhood in hindsight. We all complain about our childhoods when they're happening, and then mm. you leave the town, and you go, oh, shit, that place was great. I rode my bike all over the place. Uh, your mother was schizophrenic? Manic, depressive, schizophrenic, alcoholic, just to put a little edge on it. Because you know what? That adds that little extra. Yeah. It's like, it's like loaded sick. dice. You just never know what they, they stop, no, and then they roll over one more time. And mental health, is a, we talk about it a lot in this podcast. I'm yeah. a huge mental health advocate. Right. And, uh, like working with the Thalians people over at Cedars and stuff and right. panic and bipolar and all this stuff. Uh, your mom, like this is a real deal, like in, in, institutionalized mental health. Yeah. Problems. In and out. Yeah. The, I, if you watch, like, uh, they took her to like the nut hut. Like it wasn't like, Oh, she's having one of her spells. It's oh like, no, no, no. Was, they, here come the men in the white coat. Here's some new medication pull, for mom. Oh no, no, they pulled her out. No, no. She shot and killed her last husband. I say last husband because you don't get another one after that. <laughs> well, they take you out of the husband wish book you at move, that point. No, you move to the Inland Empire. You get a couple cracks <laughs> yeah, at it. True. Ontario. There's certain areas Ontario though. Ontario Mills you Mall. You get three before they put you away. Yeah. Uh, I was going to go linearly, but if you jump around, is better. Your your mom, uh, but the husband that she shot was not your father. It was your stepdad who beat the shit out of her yeah. constantly. Yeah. And the straw that broke the camel back. Camel's back was that uh, she uh, Thanksgiving dinner wasn't done yet. Thanksgiving, the guy was the, uh, in the joke I would do about the guy was the guy. First of all, let me stop you right there. Yeah. The fact that Christopher Titus on stage and right here on the Jay Moore Stories podcast goes, the joke I tell about my mom shooting her husband <laughs> goes like this. <laughs> but his mom shot her husband. Shot and killed him, man. Uh, and was acquitted. It was acquitted, yeah. If she had your lawyers for your divorce, oh, she, she would have had the fucking chair by now. Yeah, she she'd have she'd have, they'd have fried they her. They would have woke her up wa- and fried her again like we fried They'd have walked her to the next room with the glass and wa- <laughs> let everybody see it Yeah, with my last attorneys. Um, they would have fucking hung her in that little town you like. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, so yeah, so so he, he on Thanksgiving, the, the turkey hit the table. My, tr- my sister told me the turkey hit the table like 15 minutes late, and he'd been drinking, and he just picked the turkey up and threw it across the room. So my mom countered with a boiling pot of potatoes, Ooh. which, as was her right, I looked it up in yeah. the domestic violence desk reference. Oh, okay. There's a joke from the show, and uh, I like and that then a lot. and then he uh, and then he crushed her face and literally like she he had to get reconstructed. He crushed her face and so she went upstairs and got a gun and came down and shot him three times. And because uh, yeah, and and uh, so the way the weird. The funniest part of the story, <laughs> where my mom shoots and kills Even a guy. Funnier than that. Yeah. Wow. Well, the guy, the guy, <laughs> the guy had, the guy had two acres of land and and out in Idaho or whatever the Wyoming wherever they lived, and he was the one that had taken mom out and taught her how to shoot. <laughs> so, <laughs> see, that's always that's no, always he's good for it. That Uncle always ben. made me laugh really hard. Like it was like it was like. How did she get acquitted? Um, she shot him. Uh, she shot him, and uh, well, she she went into court, and her, they had pictures of her face just swollen up and crushed right, but in. Still against the law to kill somebody. Yeah, but I think it was self defense. I think it was self defense. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. she got she got the she got the she got the guy's hundred thousand dollar life insurance policy too. Like a boss. It's just great. You just go. You know what, man? Once in a uh, while. But that's not a happy ending to the story. No, that's not happy ending. Mom, mom. Later on, she moved. She, my mom would whatever town mom moved to. Another joke I would do: she would attract the alpha loser of that town, mm-hmm. just that real tough mullet wearing guy. And and this guy she was with, I guess. Well, she she went nuts again. They put her this sheriff that she knew in town. She her, she just randomly went up to a sheriff's office, like she lived in a small town in Missouri, and took like a, a log. Big tree branch and threw it through the front window of the sheriff's office. Mm-hmm. So instead of putting her in jail, he put her in a mental care facility. So she ate, she went and she, I guess she started seeing something different about life. She got out. Uh, she went home, made dinner, and shot herself. Yeah, I haven't written that bit yet. Well, we're <laughs> we're waiting with breath that is bated. <laughs> Like, hold on, wait. A, so your mom uh, killed herself. Yes. How long after killing your stepdad did your mom kill herself? Oh, she was fine. She lived ten years, ten, twelve years after that. I don't think. I don't think there was any residual from that. I, I think. I think there was a it's horrible I think, depression. I that think it, eats, eats you up. But her whole life, though. Like I used to go. Like when I was a kid, my dad would take me to the mental hospital, and I would sit at a table and meet my, you know, talk to mom and color with her, or whatever. They would, you know, have people watching us, and then I would go visit her in the mental hospital. That's that's how I lived my that. That's how I lived. One of the scariest moments of life. They used to have drive-in movies. I'm in California. Lived. I think it's a drive-in mental hospital. Drive-in. <laughs> I get all excited. <laughs> Just well, that's bam, bam. Is anybody here? Bam. So, uh, and we, she took me to see uh, hot I'm, sauce, fire sauce. With that? I'm a li- <laughs> I'm a little kid. She takes me to see one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Oh, I'm boy. a little kid. So the scene where um, uh, McMurphy's getting getting zapped. I look over, my mom is just fucking crying. Like, I'm a kid. I'm just watching this movie, and I look over, and my mom is just sobbing. And I go, and you know, when you're a kid, you just know things are weird. Mom, I always, I always had to look at edge around mom. 
But like we're in this movie, and she, and, and 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 I'm just like, oh shit, what's going on? And she goes, that's what they did to me. And then and, and I finished my popcorn. <laughs> Was your mom? This is so weird. This is so dark because I hear it. Like to me, I'm over it. But when I tell it, it's really dark sounding, isn't it? Yeah, but no, it's no, fa- no, no. It's not that dark. <laughs> 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 Again, that was fear based. That back. wasn't that wasn't trying to make me feel better. That was don't snap here. He uh <laughs> he he cares for a few people in his own home. He he doesn't he's not afraid of death, this man. He doesn't care. <laughs> he's not a he waves grown ups re rents <laughs> all day. All day. <laughs> um but your your mom's mental illness was it like the uh, the government's coming to get us kind or was yep. it just depression yeah. kind? We had this, oh, it was the government kind. We had well, this is going to sound crass, and I don't want it to. I mean it completely seriously. There's nothing. That's the, that's the kind I like. Like that fascinates me. Yeah. Because the gov- the conspiracy crazy, they net what fascinates me about it. No matter what roadblock you put in front of their logic, they just go right around yep. it. Yep. Right. You go. The government's not watching you. They don't find you that interesting. And they're like, well, that's because they got into you. See, they programmed you from the time. Mm-hmm. And you say something else. That's what they want you to think. That's what they want you to think. Yeah. And you go, they're not bugging the house. I checked. And you go, but you didn't check under the storm drains. And the thing, you go, actually, I did. She goes, not so. It never ends. And across the street, they have shotgun mics. I can hear you anywhere. You check the house all you want. Yeah, yeah. So we actually had on the wall of Titus, we had this because the show is about my life. We had this letter that my mom had sent me. The wall me. of Titus? The wall of Titus. There was a wall where we had, like, because people didn't believe when I'd come up with the story ideas for the show. They would go, this didn't really happen. i go, oh, the storyboard oh, wall of your actual show. Right. Titus. So okay. next to that, pinned to the like wall. the wailing wall. Because like, you've got good names for your <laughs> the, specials. The, like the Titus wall. Wall, wall, wall of, of Titus. Titus. Oh, I have a lot of fans. You, they built a small wall to me. It's in Israel. Weirdly enough. So um, uh, what happens is, is that we put this letter in this letter. I don't know how she'd written it, but she obviously had a serial killer typewriter because it would drop the S down like half a letter. That's how they so, catch you yeah, on, like, yeah, all, it was, on the old like <laughs> Quincy's and stuff like, uh, the Y always drops out, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> so she, would, she wrote this letter that said, uh, my sister was a teenager at the time. She goes, your sister, is, your sister is doing things she shouldn't do. She has no idea who she's fucking with. I got a new job. Um, it's with a government. It's a, with a government group. I can't tell you who it is, but I'll talk to you later, mom. And it was like, and it's, it's the craziest looking letter. It's just like it's the, and it's weird because the words uh, on their own are just oh, pretty innocuous. Together, it's like it just got the creepiest feel to it. And I and left just it up. the S that drops down makes yeah. it so creepy. Yeah, and I left it up on the wall. Whenever we'd get a new writer to the show, they'd go, "Come on, dude, this really happened." I go, "Read that. That's from my mom. That was like a birthday card letter. Read that." <laughs> they'd be like. How how bad was your dad that when the state pulls you from your mom, you don't go to your dad, you go to your grandparents? No, 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 no. My mom, my dad's child support couldn't pay for my um, my my care and my mom's drinking. So what happened was, is she she actually to keep me away from my dad, she sent me to Detroit. She just sent me to Detroit and didn't tell anybody. Like boy, violated all the California state Who laws. Was in Detroit. Um, my old grandparents, great grandparents, old people. Old, old, like great, great. You're like uh, Iggy and the Stooges. No, I mean, I, no, I know. I mean, old. Like they, they didn't take you. If you got sick, you didn't go to a pharmacy. They went in the backyard and dug medicine up. Like yeah. it was old. You know, little cayenne mm-hmm. pepper. Chew that, that right stick up. for a while. It'll cure it up. You know those people. <laughs> they used to like put me in a tub. Like I get a sunburn, they put me in a tub of vinegar. Like yeah. I remember taking a bath of vinegar. Yeah, and, and they're, they're marinating me. I, it I still as a smells kid. on you a little bit. Yeah, I know, man. That's no. I used to work at Kentucky Fried Chicken. That's what that is. No, it's vinegar. I smell. <laughs> I'm olfactory man. I got the vinegar scent. <laughs> it's the, bad. The tightest waft. So my dad kidnapped it. me from them. My dad actually had. Oh, I'm ki- sorry. My dad kidnapped me from them. Say, what? where did you work? Yeah, did, did, no, no, no. I. This is much more interesting. What? <laughs> my dad kidnapped me. My dad actually had to kidnap me from your. Yeah. Well, what happened was is that he found man, out they from never, your grandparents. Yeah, he found out from uh, one of my mom's friends that I was in Detroit because he's going. I got to see my kid. You know, if you have kids, if you have kids. And someone's keeping them from you. You will, you will do anything you can to get them. So he, so he finds out I'm in Detroit. Takes the last bit of money he had. He just got his second wife. Got into a plane. Flies out and he's drinking. He's on the plane. He's just pounding alcohol. Can't pay child support or for your mom's booze. But now he cobbles no. together enough money for an airplane. Ticket. No, no, you're missing. No, my dad paid. Never missed a child support payment. My, the child support couldn't afford. My mom was using the child support for her to keep partying. Got it. Yeah, my dad paid. My dad never missed a child okay, support payment. Cool. Um, and so, so he comes on the plane. He's drinking, and he and he's sitting next to this dude, and he's just going off. He's just he's going. Eh, let me tell you, if I can take my fucking kid, I'm gonna get my fucking kid. Son of a bitch. Hey, you know, I'm taking him. I don't give a shit what they do. He, and he's blurting for like two, three hours. And he finally just goes to the guy. He goes, "I'm sorry, I've been talking so long." He goes, I'm, "What are you doing?" The guy goes, "I'm the Detroit Metro District Attorney." 
<laughs> my dad, my dad used to tell me. He goes, he goes, because I was a little kid at the time. He just goes, I remember just sitting there knowing that when they landed the plane, I was getting arrested. So your dad knows he's getting arrested when he gets off the plane, right? No, yeah. So what happens is, is that he, uh, the guy, the Detroit Metro the District Attorney, turns to him and goes, "I'm in the middle of a divorce. Let me tell you how to get your kid." And legally, he gives my dad this plan how to get me out of Detroit so they can extradite me back from California. They can't get him. So all he has to do is call. All he has to do is before he gets on the plane, before the plane takes off, he has to call my grandfather and tell him where he's taking me. So my dad gets off the plane, goes to my grandparents' house, and didn't sit, tell anybody he was doing it. And I'm a little kid, I'm smelling like vinegar. And my father, my father walks in, and my grand, my mother, by the way, my my mother. This is how evil divorce is. My mother had been telling my dad, my grandparents, that my father wasn't paying a dime, was you know didn't want to see me. Was everybody spends it? Yeah, everybody yeah. spends it. Now my dad says he doesn't know why he did this, but he had taken every one of his canceled child support checks for the last three years, and they were in his breast pocket of his suit. And my grandfather starts get, opens the door and goes, "You son of a bitch!" But just starts ripping into him. You l- useless loser, piece of shit. My dad takes out three years of child support checks and hands them to my grandfather. And he flips through them. My grandfather starts to cry. And again, this is I'm a little I'm like four. Like and is this, this is after watching Cuckoo's Nest with your mom. Uh, no, yes. Okay, yes. but then you go back to uh, California with Takes your father, yeah. but then you run away from your father and move back into your mom, but only in your mom's garage. Teenager. By the way, listen, anybody does – from 12 to, to 18, you're just an idiot, and you can do shit. I ran yeah, away. Yeah, but I was ghost riding my bike down stairwells. I wasn't <laughs> flying across the country. No, I hitchhiked. I actually – I actually, the first day of school in my eighth grade year, I'm standing at the bus stop, and I, I turned. Everyone else got on the bus. I didn't. Made a left, walked down the street to the front of the mall, stood at the entranceway to the freeway, and hitchhiked to San Jose Airport and got on a plane. And some dude just took me there, and you know. And now today, you know, they, I'd have been killed and raped. Did you uh, suck the guy's dick? I was just, yeah, I was raped a little bit. But you know, look, I got, little, the, I got the airport. Right. I got the. Yes, he was gentle. I was a kid, um, and I go back to. <laughs> 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 you slip that – wow. So you can really tell good comics when they slip in something that abhorrent. And I just – it just washed over me like a breeze. I'm like, uh. And then it got past me. I'm like, whoa, oh, Jesus. Wait a minute. Wow. I moved with my mom from 12 to 14. And this is when the, the, the last straw I'm, – I'm, I, I spent the summer with my dad. And uh, not summer. I spent like three weeks with him. And I go back to start school back in L.A. with my mom. And we landed, and things were wrong. Like, everything was wrong. She was wearing an army jacket and white go-go boots. And we, get, we, we, she, we go to the bus stop. Like, there's no car now. And I go, uh, where's the car? I'm 14. Like, I'm at the edge. I mean, my body's changing. This is actually, take- but that is Goldie Hawn's outfit from it, Private Benjamin. It is. It is true. It is true. Maybe, and maybe that's why. It's about that time, maybe. So uh, what happens is, is, uh, is we, go, we, go to the, we go to the bus stop, and then we take the bus across to way far away from our house. I'm like, where are we going? She goes, oh, we've moved into a friend's garage. <laughs> and I go, what? And I'm 14. Like, 14 is not – you can't bring girls home at 15, 14, you know. You know, where's your key? I don't have a key. <laughs> you know, and uh, – Help me lift this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, help me lift Get that edge. And basically, <laughs> we show up that night, and there's a car, and there's cots in this person's garage. And I, I called my dad the next morning, and I said, uh, I know you're going to basically rip my ass for the next 10 years, but i got to move back. There's no way at 14 years old I'm going to live in this. I, I don't have someone who, who can take care of what I need as a, as a kid. I'm like, still, like, you're still a kid at 14. That's way too heavy a decision for a 14-year-old kid to make. Yeah, but you know, if, imagine. You're like, hey, this isn't the structure I need to thrive. A lot of kids, <laughs> like, I think of, like, just kids in Long Beach be like, oh, I'm going to smoke so much dope in this garage. Right. No. Sh- what's she going to say? She thinks the government's after us. She thinks she works for the government. You know? Yeah, I guess I, 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 guess I couldn't I'm, really I'm abuse this I'm going to tell her I'm a DEA agent, and i got to smoke all this how do pot. You, but how do you abuse that situation? I knew at 14 that, like, it was going to just get worse. And my sister, was, I just knew it was going to get worse. Sister's older or younger? Younger. Yeah, younger. And she actually, she actually, you know, she was raised by mom, and she never had a shot. Man, a kid never had a shot. But you were the typical... Wow, we have gotten really into a weird place. Yeah, go ahead. No, this is great. Yeah, yeah. This, this is... It's not my a sister jokey, killed her, jokey My puck. sister killed herself about nine years ago. My sister was raised by my mom. Yeah, she did. The hits just keep coming. For I'm you. telling you, if you want to keep going, let's go. So what happened? She lived in Florida. But I, well, if you remember, I told our dear listeners, our Moriers, right? Uh, that Moriers? Yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> nice. shirts, shirts are made I'll, up. I'll be mocking you for a long time. Go, you mock what you want. I'm like selling it. t-shirts. Like, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> That's a, look at the house, fucker. Keep mocking. After the show at the casino, I'm like, come on now. Step on Move up. Some more, yeah. Uh, your sister, how did she... This I did tell the listener, because Carla Bove came on. That story is like beyond tragic. Right. Uh, but And I said, it is, this, yeah. you're going to top this by 50000 and you have not disappointed. You're... It, I don't. This is more than any one lifetime for four different people, and it's all in yours. And somehow you go up and tell jokes. Like you're really you're to be admired. Like it's a. And I've always said David Lee Roth sat here and told me comedy comes from pain, and I told him I no because I don't have any pain. No, I just go up and goof off. Yeah. But you are the guy that David Lee Roth would look at and go, see what I mean? Like, yeah. comedy comes from pain. Yeah, and you know what's weird, man? It's, like, such a big... You can't make it big like that. I love fucking telling jokes. I love getting on stage. And the weird thing is, I used to be a sh- really shitty comic. I really was a shitty comic. When I started, it was all, hey, you ever go to the store and you buy stuff? It was just the lamest shit ever. I don't get it. And the, exactly. It was just bad. It was, it was like... Funny, I, huh? my, uh, my shower's got two settings. Arctic. Hold on. What, what over there? That was pretty funny. See? He got maybe, it. I'll, you like that one? See, yeah. so maybe it's, maybe you just don't get store and buy stuff? That's pretty funny. <laughs> You know what I mean? Just lame, but twenty dollars is a dollar. man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, seriously, one of the jokes was, uh, uh, "Hey, I went to the gym today. I went to the gym today, and uh, 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 I'm kind of sore because I got on the stairmaster, tripped, and fell down it for forty five minutes." That was. <laughs> I like that joke. It's a good joke, a good but, it's, but it's but it's you know better what? than the one about Stephen the Wright store. says that. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say very better than the one about the store? Hey, it was my first one. I was early. All right, was let me tell you this joke back. Right. You're too hard on yourself. Ready? Hey. I was at the gym today, and I was on the Stairmaster, and I fell off of it, and I fell down the stairs for 45 minutes. <laughs> like, Stephen Wright tells that exact joke, and people go, boom, yeah. this is a great joke. Yeah. Or That's Mitch true. Hedberg, I fell down the stairs for 45 minutes. Yeah. It was not funny. I never got to the bottom. <laughs> Or like what? I don't know. Actually, that wouldn't make sense. That joke doesn't make sense because the stairs go down, you knucklehead. If the stairs went up, you could fall. If it well, was like they, well see, that's why you don't explain shit. Like if I let's go through your act and just start taking it apart and going, well, let's go down bit by bit. No, and make, was like let's put some logic to your comedy and make sure that fucking works. I was staunchly defending you up and until then I was way out on the limb. Up until myself. you became Spock and, and started I, and to fucking. I, was, I looked at my right and left. I saw your lawyers. <laughs> anyway, what am I doing out here? Just let him think the joke sucks. So when people make it a big deal, when people make, <laughs> yeah, wait a minute, that joke makes no sense at all, uh, like all jokes. But uh, so what? I, what I did? What I? I just I don't want to make it heavy, man. Like I talk about what I talk about. Everybody else makes it heavy. And the thing is, if you can't, like I've seen comics get on stage and try to tell their pain. And it comes across as pain where you're like, you're not laughing. You're just like, oh, fuck, man, stab me in the face because it's horrible what you went through. You have to get through it and be okay with it to even write jokes about it. So does it come from pain? Sure, but you have to be past the pain to even attempt writing jokes about it. How did your sister kill herself? Uh, there was, she, she was with this dude, man. You know, again, she was raised by my mom. So imagine being raised by someone who the government was coming to get you and you never had a, she never had a real shot. She was the sister your mom said was into some serious shit. She better watch who she's fucking with. But yeah, exactly. Same sister. Okay. Yeah. Um, but she was a good kid. She wrote great, great poetry. She was in yoga class. She was great. Like I hung out with her. I'd go work in Florida and she would come to the shows and she was great. You know, square. She was a civilian. Yeah. Civilian. We had a couple of fights. She had some drama things going on, but nothing, nothing. I mean, with what I've been through in my life, it was not even anywhere near. If mom was a 10, Kirsten was a four. So all of a sudden I get this call that she, that she, that she, she killed herself. And I'm like, and and I'm like, this is out of the blue. Like it's not like when mom killed herself. We even did a joke on the show. When mom killed herself. It was like, all right, who won the pool? You know, it was, it was just going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. I mean, Your cousin, was, right? Well, uh, who did win in the pool, Uncle Dan? Uh, uh, I'll, 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 I, weirdly, Uncle Dan. weirdly enough, my dad. <laughs> Which I always thought was suspicious. I always thought was a little suspicious. Yeah, that and that hundred thousand dollar rolls over. <laughs> no, she'd gone way oh, through yeah. that. It's a rolling hundred G's, <laughs> but it's all in gin. Uh, <laughs> I love that you get offended and then you jump right on board. That's great. Yeah, well, fuck it. He's doing it. Let's go. Yeah. No, I'm not offended at all. Uh, I just can't believe so what Kirsten the did. life you've had. So what happened, Kirsten? And there's, there's, a weird, there's a weird epilogue to this story um, because she, she had actually gone. She was dating this guy, and they'd gone back and forth in a relationship, and they were breaking up like every three weeks. And about the, I don't know, 18th time they broke up, she just decided she went to his house, and she went to his room. Got his handgun, sat on the, the fucking be- guns in your family. Sat on, I don't have a guy. Sat on the end of his bed, at, at, at end of his bed, and and basically shot herself and blew her brains all over his headboard. And the weirdest thing that we, that 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 happened later with that because it was horrible. It was just horrible. I can't even. It's like I my my uh, 
my fiance goes, you know, you need to tell that story one of these times and figure out how to get over that. I go, I'm over it. I'm, I, but I don't, I don't see. There's how nothing you get ab- over it. How? I mean, over it in the sense that because she can't come back. I mean, I can't. You know, what well, do you do? I see what you mean. Um, so I'm not over it in the sense like it's horrible. I wish it never happened. But what am I going to do? And I'm like, it's probably a story I'll probably never tell on stage because there's nothing in it to me that makes me go, oh, there's there's a there's a way in. Um, the dude, I was I was working one of the clubs in Florida and. Some guy comes up to me and he goes, "Hey, um, you know, Kirsten's uh, uh, boyfriend is here and wants to talk to you." I'm like, "I'm like, what?" And he's like, yeah, yeah, he wants to talk to you. You got a minute? I'm like, "Yeah." So I go outside the open area. It's it's the Hollywood, Florida club, and I uh, walk outside. The rock. The, yeah, I rock, and I that's go. That's a rock. That's a rough spot. <laughs> yeah, man. man. Just get from the club to the Keep hotel. Keep your head on a swivel, yeah. boy. Yeah. Um, so I walk out, and the guy sits down across the table from me. And he goes, he goes, "Yeah, I want to talk to you about Kirsten killing herself," and I was like. Okay, and he go. He goes. You know, you didn't call her enough, and I was like, and at that, I was at now. Sometimes the universe is good to you and presents you like something to take your anger out on. You because know, I was really like, mad. like a fox present. Yeah, it was. It was like a yeah, like a friend, like thirty million dollars of syndication money gone. But you know, I, I we need a callback bell on the show. <laughs> nice, ding ding. It made me feel great. Um. So what happens is he he starts going. He goes, you didn't call her enough, like, and I and I was at this table, and I just. And that rage that you so love in me yeah. already, yeah. I uh, I just go, I go, are you fucking kidding me, man? And he goes, what? He, he goes, are you saying that my sister killed myself in your fucking bedroom, in your fucking bed, that it's my fault? And he goes, well, you didn't call enough. And I, and I stood up and I'm like, get the fuck up. And, I, and I, I'm like, literally, I don't even know what I'm going to do, but I know this guy's going down. And uh, my buddy Tommy was with me at the time and he used to handle like security and stuff. And he just fucking grabs the guy and turns him and walks him away. You know, I got my black belt in 06, but I was really like, I'm sorry. I got my black belt in 06. So There's like, so many like, facets I your do, life. Like, I like, do well, know. I got my black belt in 06. And then I was a uh, bucket you know, list. Bucket list. I'm not a I'm not a badass at all, man. Wait, by the way, train no. martial arts for a long time. You learn really quick that there's another guy out there that will rip your fucking head off. That's why I love UFC. I try to explain to anybody that's on the fence about it. The yeah. guy that loses is a black belt. Yeah, the guy. Yeah, the guy, the guy lost. that is laying on the ground looking for his mouthpiece is the is a fucking third degree black belt. Will take out that anybody sword training <laughs> yes. in the Philippines, and he just got yeah. taken out by a fucking college wrestler. Yeah. Uh, the one. Here's what I think about your sister killing herself. Uh, Oh, you have a joke? Good. Finally, you found a way in? No, it's not a joke, (laughs) but it is like the only way to to get out of the depths of that depression. Like, in a way, she won. Yeah. Because that guy had to clean that headboard. Yeah, you know, yeah. And he cursed her. (laughs) Like that guy had to scrub right. a fucking headboard and go. And and every time there's a black light in that room, he could he, never clean it all up. Every time that he turns his black light on, he's got to see something. <laughs> he's got to see something. Take that CSI motherfucker. Yeah, take that shit. Get some luminol yeah. in there. Yeah, how you and like her now, huh? <laughs> it's unbelievable. Because if the gun go, and I'm not making a joke, but if she did it the like traditional way, like in the mouth, it go. It's everything's the spatters behind. And I'm not being, you know, I'm not being. I do, I trust you. The spatter's behind her. But the fact that she had the presence of mind, like, no, this is going all over you, (laughs) your sheets, your (laughs) pillow, the headboard and the wall. Like, you're going to be cleaning this shit. Like, look, my kid spilled a fucking apple juice on his own sweatpants at the gym beret. And I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? Do you guys have a hairdryer? Like, I don't even know how to get this out. There's an in and out French fry in my car that I can't find. But every time I get in my car, I get you. I hear you. What are you saying? She won. (laughs) She won. (laughs) And she's and she's on. You, you know, know, it's weird. I didn't think someone was going to find like a victorious end to that story. But it's you the did. first thing nice, I thought of. Nice job. As soon as you, nice as job. soon as you positioned your hand the way you did, and I'm like, oh no, my god. Went. No, she went boom. But she did it in a way where it went all over. Yeah, the all bed, over. Not the away, it went bed. towards him, not away she from knew him. His thing. So he had to get her off of him. When he knew that, no, correct? no, he wasn't there. No, she, so he had uh, to find her. Then that's not funny. Oh, it's different. Yeah, you're right. It does. Out of context, it doesn't make sense. Do you? I had this discussion with my buddy Billy. I was in New York and. Like my one of my best best friends, Billy Hayes. I don't think everything happens for. I don't think everything happens for a reason. I think that's like Western self medicating bullshit. But I know, in my heart of hearts, that everything happens. Right. And as Pekowski once wrote, "What matters most is how you walk through the fire. You got to get through it." Now you're a guy with these unspeakable tragedies. Do you think everything happens for a reason? No, I think things shit. I think I think it's a crazy. There's very. Uh, there's there's an an immense chaotic randomness to it all, and all you can do 
is, and sometimes it works out, but sometimes I, people go, well, see, if that hadn't happened, then you wouldn't become the person you are. Well, yeah, but had it not happened, who says I like who I'd I be am? a different person. I'd be, right. maybe I'd be president or something good, yeah. you know, instead of this guy. And when you were a kid, you'd meet a guy that never got stung by a bee, never had a broken bone, and you're like, never had his appendix out, never had his tonsils out, and you're yep. like, what the fuck is life? Is this guy like, no, you never broke your wrist on a skate? Like, what? Yeah. Hey, let's build a ramp for the bikes. Nope. Yeah, or they just do it and nothing ever happens. Yeah. Like that guy, like nothing ever happens to that guy. So it's, it, I, I'm, it's. That's always the guy that goes nuts in the mall, though. <laughs> that's the guy that something. I never broke. Yeah. I ate the no, bones. No, no. no, because something happened because his, his, because. <laughs> I ate the bones. <laughs> like, no, dude. I've had no pain. Give me some. <laughs> no, that's the guy. The something pain. little happens and loses his shit. That's Titus was based on. He, that's the guy who gets his whole life, gets to his thirties, gets to thirty four, and some horrible fucking tragedy happens, and he has no ability to deal with it. And that switch because there's no like you. If you broke bones, you got screwed over pretty bad. You get build up this weird kind of insulation to it, like this. Like I have insulation. Like literally, you could fuck. I would with me, hope so. You can fuck with me really bad, and I'll like I'll deal with the, the situation as it comes, and then I'll move on the next day. I'll get. Like I'm always mad on people hold on to anger. I'm always I'm always like, yeah. what is your fucking deal? Are you still mad at me? I have a guy that because of that that incident at, at, at the uh, at the at the on the show. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. the incident on the show yeah. is still fucking mad at me. It was a decade ago now. He's yeah. still mad. I'm like, I called him and I apologized again. I go, look, man, I shouldn't have said it at the table. You really don't hold on to shit. No, nah, man, I don't. I I have a I do have my my big problem is I have a switch. Uh, loyalty is a big thing to me. If you fuck me over and I did everything I could to back you up. You're done, and and it's not even. I'm not even mad. I'm just like, man. Nah, well, we you should live my life. Yeah, there's a lot of fucking turncoats around here. Yeah, no. <laughs> we'll talk all about it later on. <laughs> my, uh, but you're right. Like you, you get this weird shell. Like I don't know who has a shell. Like I said, Damien Eccles earlier. The guy was on death row for 18 years. That'll fucking build. Yep. I don't think he cares about a parking ticket when he's nah. living in Salem, Massachusetts. <laughs> but like, you break bones. You get fucked over by society. The older kids make you jerk them off in the park when you're growing up. All hypothetical. Hold on that. a second. <laughs> and then like I you're on the beach bones, and you're jogging but... and like I broke my leg. I had a stress fracture. I actually and broke I... my wrist jerking off a guy. <laughs> but he was an eighth grader. Go ahead. And you were older. Yeah. Was so older. The, what I say is weird. <laughs> but it is one of those things like you get stung by a bee like, How did on I get the beach. I this conversation. Between the – you drove here. <laughs> Uh, and you get stung by the by a bee like on your ear at the beach, and instead, like a lot of people freak the fuck out. And guys that ha- you get like, I would say your cushion is a ten out of ten. Mine's probably like a f- three. Nah, where I you- just go like, I just broke my fucking wrist. Like, all right, all right, urgent care, I guess. Yeah. Like you just methodically go through it. But people that don't have anything happen to them, it's like I hate the bones. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm just a little obsessed with the bones. Sorry, but like people oh, get stung man. by a bee. You see them in the parks, like oh, a fucking bee, and you're like, my my sister killed herself. Yeah, exactly. And you're well, running that, from that, a bee. That's why when people whine, like my my ex would whine about stuff sometimes, and I I would just like shake my head, like like I really are we having this conversation? It's it's like like I was talking to my fiance about this. When you play big in life, you play big in life. You do. You've been on these big movies. You've done. You've done. You you you, you get up you on the stage. Big. You, bet you big. gotta go big. The problem is when you, you bet go, on yourself. There's there's two there's two good things. When you go big, I'm going to start a studio. I'm starting a mini studio now called Combustion Films. I already sold my first project. We sold did it ourselves. I sold my first project. Fuck it. I'm going to start a mini studio. I'm doing it. I'm going to do my first movie on my I own. Said, dude. Fuck it. Are you kidding me? I already have, I have two scripts. I want you to read because I want you in them. Fake Mustache Studios. <laughs> it's and right. Titus Productions. But or combustible product. What is it? Combustion. Combustion. Yeah. It's I that like moment. It. That moment when, when fuel and spark creates fire. That moment. That's what it is. My does. defense, if I have one. Yeah, in my defense, if I in my defense, if I have one, that isn't that that is the name of the special. Thank you for calling it. It's a good one. I will give you credit on the on the final credits. So, if you play big in this life, then the little shit just goes away. If you just but you got to play big. It's all these people that don't like. I goes I, even the fucking. I was in the, the court line at DMV today, and 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 it's actually in court, not DMV. And everybody is like, this two hundred bucks is fucking fine. Is their whole fucking life. The dude when the dude in front of me, the fucking little puppet, he had a fucking tear. And he had fucking two fucking pavers, and he and he goes and he goes he go, and he and the woman behind the counter is just the person that takes your the money little or puppet. little puppet. He said, "Walk up," and he had two pieces of paper, and he walk up and he said, uh, "He said to her, he say, he goes, listen, man, what happened was I was at the car, man, I parked my car right, but I uh, my registration was two days old, but someone had taken a sticker, and this fucking poor girl behind the bulletproof glass is just, I just take the money and sign, hand you Maybe paperwork. Checked, he he was doing, he he laid the whole court case out." 
to the woman at the fucking at the fucking thing. And I and I was just shaking my head like like that's your life, dude. Like play big. I'm not saying that little puppet has a problem. I'm sure he got shit. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm just saying Where's Big Puppet though? I don't even want to know him. I hope he doesn't listen to the Kick on nine, the the Lakers are coming, big. I hope he's not a Morrier. <laughs> no, no, Vato, we got more of your Vatos, man. <laughs> Do you? That's for real. Most of them are in Phoenix homes. <laughs> I don't know why, but they call that radio show. They go, Vato, I'm they glad to talk to you, man. man. Cucuya mañana. Uh, so, uh, it, so you got to play big in life. Uh, I have a question, and I've been. this has been bugging me because I saw a special. I saw a special. I'm going to wrap this up. I saw a special, the special you did where you told a story about Buddy Hackett at the end. This is when I really started to think what a great comic you were because you have comedy – a lot of guys, I, and I've been listening to Comedy Central Radio, and I don't, I hate that I don't want to talk shit because Comedy Central's helped me out a lot. But there's a lot of comics right now. They're and horrible. It's, it's the same fucking cock sucking, blow job, ass yeah. rape, blah blah. But my, which, my in, our, in defense of everything, is probably guy, what you and I did for the first six years of our careers. No, I never did. I actually, because because you know, is where I never did. All right. I, I never did. You mean, <laughs> you mean actually? Did and you did it with impressions. No, I meant you, you did. What if did Jimmy it. Stewart <laughs> to get Whoa. to get Uncle the gigs? Had, yes, yeah. to get the gigs. Of course. I, I thought you meant on stage. No, like, God, I'm not. A, wouldn't you have sucked the studio head's dick to keep being like the Matrix? Ah, uh, you, you would, didn't know it was the Matrix then, though. You were just another whore, just trying to get another. But job. If you knew it was that check. No, I tell you what. The only thing that changed in my life when I got Titus. The only thing that the only thing is that I stopped. I stopped kissing anybody's ass. I just stopped. I walked into that, that audition and I just went meh. Now, if someone said to me, this movie's going to make $14 billion and you get $2 billion of it. All I know is I'm paying you a million dollars to be in this movie. You can suck my dick or not. Mm, I, uh, All right, let million me read five. this. Million script. five. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me I'm not script. saying no. Can I, can I give some script. notes? <laughs> uh, what, so, Buddy Hackett. So, Buddy Hackett. So, that, that story you told at the end. What, um, Buddy Hackett was one of my favorite people of all time. Yeah, it's um, when he, figure to me. Really? Now, that's what I wanted to know. How did that happen? We met, uh, I auditioned for the movie Pauly, and I didn't know what voice to do for the bird, to be the voice of the bird. And on the drive to the audition, Barry Katz is like, if you don't go in, they're not even going to make the movie. They can't find anybody. It's been kicking around for years. So I decided on a buddy. Wow, Hackett that's voice. a phenomenal Barry Katz. So I'm driving, and I go, I'll just make him East Coast. Hey, how you doing? Something easy. And then I go, ah, that's like a mook. You know, it's a cute little bird. I go, I'll raise the voice a little higher. And I realized I am doing Buddy Hackett for the voice of Polly the bird. I can fly. Hooray. <laughs> I go into the audition. Buddy Hackett walks out of the room. He was the guy that auditioned right before me. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God. So yeah, I just plow through like I didn't see him. Right. And I got the part. And then I also had an acting part, and he had an acting part. And the bird, me, him, and the bird are in a scene together. And if you close your eyes, you don't know who's talking. I'm like, come on, Adi. Let's go to the track. And he's like, shut up, you goddamn flying. And the bird's like, I wish I could go to the track. You don't know who's who. And Buddy Hackett said to me, I'll never understand how you got a job doing me. And I go, I think they just wanted a younger you. And he goes, fair enough. <laughs> and we just became like best friends. And he just picked my mind open about comedy. And I emptied watched. it out like those Buddhist cones, those stories where it's like, do you meet the teacher and they just throw your tea out and start refilling it the what's right the biggest way? Thing, what's it, by the way, this is for me. What's one of the biggest things he told you about comedy that, you, that, you, that would really stick with you? Uh, you keep peeling the onion. Nothing's finished, ever. Ever, 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 nothing's ever finished. I always, every time I film something, I always feel that. I watch it and I go, fuck. But that's done. You gotta, that's, now you just make a new onion. Yeah, yeah. Never walk to the mic. Uh, walk in front of the mic. Point to a guy in the front row. Look up at the balcony and wave. I'm so glad you guys came. And then there's a guy on this side. He's going to want to high five you or something. You touch his hand. He paid for parking. He's in his <laughs> pocket already for 45 $50. And you didn't even say nothing yet. And the drinks didn't come. Shake his hand, you know. And then you go behind the mic, and that whole room goes behind the mic with you. Wow. And I've never walked to a mic since. I always walk in front of the mic. Interesting. Because it's a little scary to walk in front of closer. The yeah, yeah. We like being behind the mic. Yeah, it, it goes the other way. They're scared of me when I get closer. That's why I have a laugh. I don't use a mic. You use that. a lavalier mic? Yeah. For really? About, for about 12 years now, yeah. I've never. I actually. Get, I can't. I do too, so many stories and so much movement that it's it's really weird. You do well. I. You, you, it's there's only like six white headliners, and I mean this in all sincerity. Like when you look at the improv website, it's like you, me, Kevin Nealon, 
Yeah. It's only like Brian Regan is doing theaters now. There's only like six guys that are out there like still digging in the trenches. And we all just kind of follow each other from town to town like itinerant preachers. But we did, like, like Neelan did my, I have a benefit called the Insight Youth Project for Homeless Teens in L.A. And we did, and Carvey's headlined it, Bill Maher's headlined it, Leno's headlined it. And it's weird because when... Neilan loves comedy. Like his new shit is is great. Like yeah. I, uh, David Wayne told me something a long time ago. He said, "Never stop doing this. No matter how good you Let get." Me tell you something, Christopher Titus. Yeah, and he's, but he said, character. "No matter." He goes, "No matter how famous you get." He goes, "Eddie lost it." He goes, "Eddie lost it." That's what he said to me. He goes, "Eddie lost it." He goes, "It's over." He goes, "No matter what Eddie does, Eddie, if Eddie tries to come back, he's he's going to be twelve years, fifteen years behind, and he's going to have to spend all that time getting it back." Hear that? Yeah. What's that? Don't, you don't talk about fucking Eddie Murphy in this <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize. Yes, I was See, in Pluto there, Nash. my mom was right. I Holy was, shit. I was in Pluto Nash. You don't, you don't talk about the great <laughs> man, one. Man, I was, time, I was man. not going to bring that up. I really wasn't going to bring that up. Um, in divorce, what people don't realize, and if you're listening to this and you're approaching a divorce, and Chris will back me up on this, a billion fold, you don't think you do? You have to pick a side. When one of your friends is getting divorced, yep. you got a couple friends that are like, well, I still talk to her. I talk to him. I'm friends with both. No, you ain't. You got to pick a side. Yeah. And you will know who's who pretty quickly when you're going through the divorce. Yep. I got a buddy right now. He just – oh, fuck, man. It's crazy. His wife, actually, he, he kissed her goodbye. She went to the airport. A- a- after the plane leaves, a dude shows up at his work and hands him fucking divorce papers. She's kind of a cool way to do it. Cool, it's cold blooded. That doesn't stock you at all. That, but it's always amazing. It's it's a. Weird. I wrote a check with two commas, just like you. What the fuck do I care about a guy getting papers? <laughs> he hasn't written the check yet. He. That's and, what I'm saying. And the thing is, here's the thing: you can't tell anybody. Like you can't tell anybody. Like this, I'm going all right because I I won. I beat my case. By the way, I turned that two hundred thousand dollars. I she owes me one hundred forty now. You paid two million dollars. Yeah, let me have a win. Let me have a fucking win. And uh, but. You can't, no matter what happens, you always think it's you. You're like, no, I can talk to her. I'll work it out. Mm, no, no. Do you go to therapy? Uh, I went to therapy for three sessions. My therapist was a guy named Dr. Jerry Ozeal, and he was treating the Menendez brothers, and he got them arrested because they had told him what they had done. They had told him what they'd done. And, and by the way, my therapist had three mistresses, and he lost his license because he had told his mistresses what the Menendez boys had told him, and then he had said, "Told them this is why he was in. This is why he was in jail. This is why he got his license pulled, because he had told them that if they told anybody, the Menendez boys would track them and kill them." Yeah, he was my touchstone. Why not just go to a different therapist? Uh, I went to a thing called the Landmark Forum. I did Landmark. Used to be S years ago, and I did the Landmark Forum, and it literally in one week, and I was like, "Got it." Got I don't know debt. what you just said. I did a thing called the Landmark Forum. Yeah. Okay. I did it. It's one weekend. It's like 500-something bucks. You go do it. You sit there in a room full of 100 people. Um, they have these forum leaders that are trained for like 11 years, and you sit there. And it used to be EST years ago. I remember that. Yeah. And What and, is uh, EST? Uh, it, I don't it, know what it stands for, but I remember the – it was basically about, like, they studied people 5,000 years. What made Gandhi, Gandhi? What made Hitler, Hitler? What made Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett? Why are some people really happy on the planet and some people have way more money but are horribly miserable? And they just studied that basically human beings are all basically the same with some blood, bone, hair. We're kind of this. We all think we're super special, but we all kind of, we, we even, here's how it's the same we are. Whether we're angry or happy, we breathe the same. Like, if you're happy, you, your breath pattern changes to exactly that laughter, that happy breath. If you, you're sad, it changes to sad. That, like, we're the same fucking machine. So they studied why human beings are miserable and why they're happy. It's and like then, a biological TED Talk. It's, it's great, man. For, I'll tell you what. I, I, the deal I make everybody is if you take the landmark forum and you don't get your money out of it, call me. I'll write you a check. We should just go and just tell him. <laughs> yeah, he's all, not all three guys in there were like, bucks. Gotta, "Why not?" Yeah, they no, you got to put more. the five. You got to put the five out first. Yeah, just, Chris, it, but they charged me more. It was weird. <laughs> they charged yeah. me like eight G's. How much are Kings tickets? That's what they charged me. <laughs> you yeah. like L.A. or Sacramento? Sacramento Kings. I think they're free. All right, Christopher Titus podcast <laughs> combustion C- combustion. Uh, my I have my clothing company, Combustion Speedwear. Uh, combustion Is that it from- right there? Uh, yeah, I like that. Them. That's yeah. cool. You know what that is? Uh, it's a tool of some sort. Oh, dude. I'm not a, I don't know anything. It's piston. Good. On the back of the shirt, it says, if you don't know what's on the front, you need to slap your dad. So that's why. Jesus, I don't want to slap my dad. <laughs> why do people think you're angry? You're making merch that says, hit your father in the face. No, if your dad didn't teach you what this is, you should be your dad. He didn't. <laughs> did your dad teach you? 
Yeah. And look, look, look how fucking nutty your life turned out. But you do know what a piston you're is. You're blaming me because of my dad. No, I'm saying like you're not slapping your dad. Right. Because he taught you what a piston is. Oh, no, me and my dad had fights. Only me and dad punched each other. Me and my dad full of ball brawls. Yeah, I take it back. I apologize. No, we, <laughs> I didn't we, know everything was right. In the tightest house. No, no, me and my dad literally have brawls. Like all the, yeah. Oh, when I was a teenager, we brawled all the time. My God. Who, I mean, who. Kicked my ass repeatedly. And your, who in your family is, it's not a joke. Who in your family is still alive? My Aunt Kathy, who's great, is the most normal human. Which she's, side? Whose sister? My dad's side. She's normal, really normal, sweetest person in the world. Uh, and she's like, she's a nurse, and she's great. And then uh, uh, mom's gone, dad's gone. Um, you know, I think it's just me left. And, and I'm You just, and Aunt Kathy. And me and Aunt Kathy. Hold on tight yeah, to that Aunt Kathy, <laughs> would you? Where she live? It's always therapy. Couldn't we just talk about the new show, which is about living life and being happy? Yeah, she's in Northern California. We love Aunt Kathy. Yeah, she's C great. or a K? Yeah, a K. That's the right way. Yeah, you don't want to be a C. But I had uncles, man. I mean, my uncle owned all, like, all these properties, and he literally just died in his... Re- he had a recliner with two fucking... I was just ready to talk about the new cruising. show, and you go back to people dying. No, you keep terrible. bringing stuff up. Uh, yeah, I sh- bring up... It's your life! The new show. By the way, I'm going to be in... Uh, at, at, there you go. Hey, ready? Please. <laughs> I mean, in Florida, on Marcos Island. At, you play anywhere other than Florida? All your stories involve comedy clubs in Florida. Do you Everything realize Everything horrible happens in Florida, by the so way. So go back to that place. Yeah, keep going. No, I, I, in the new show, uh, Voice in My Head, which will be out on Comedy Central in a couple months, that one I tell three stories where, dude, I once screamed. I didn't even know. You ever be on stage? And, like, the thing with, with being a comic, if everybody's laughing, you're fine. It's the one person who's not fucking laughing. Makes you crazy. That, and makes and you they're nice. always in the front. So th- so this woman's sitting right in front. There. This woman's sitting in front, and I'm like, and it's going through my head. That voice in my head is just screaming, like, "The fuck is her problem? How come she's not laughing? Everybody else is laughing. I didn't offend these people. It was a woman's group." And I turned. And Wait, I, I'm sorry. Why like, are you doing a show for a woman's group? Because it was a noon show. Every I was driving, it was, it was a horrible one. Hey, just, let's get Chris Titus to entertain this woman's <laughs> hey, group. Call me on exactly. Have you read this his bio? Be, He'd be perfect. <laughs> this, oh. is, this is before I. This is before I. <laughs> This is before, this is before I changed my act when I, you know, I was a real happy boy. You know, the guy, you ever go buy stuff? It was that act. And uh, Uncle Dan likes that act. Yeah, he I likes that, that act. act. So uh, that Dennis Farina so, face. He's so I like him a lot. I kept, I thought that three times already. He's a good dude. So I'm on stage and this woman is just staring at me, and I finally just try. I go, I go, what the fuck is your problem? Like, how can you laugh? I go, I go, and I, I do a callback, but I was like, I was like, did I kill your baby? What's going on? And like, she doesn't say anything. And the, uh, the it's a women's group, they all know each other. It just gets quiet. It's a noon show. It's a nooner. They actually added a nooner. And I, and, I, and I was doing good up till then. And I walk off to dead silence. Fucking nothing. Like, it's horrible. Like, it's literally, you know that where you're like, I need to be a welder because there's no way I should be on yeah. stage again. I walk backstage. Comedian I'm working with, a guy named Carl Banks, is, there's a little kitchenette because there's a town auditorium. It's in this, this is in the deep south. He's lying on the floor in front of the stove, and he's curled up in a fetal position, and he's shaking with laughter. And I go, I go, what the hell's your problem, man? And he goes, she's blind. <laughs> she's blind. You were screaming into the face of a blind woman. <laughs> and she didn't know. Ah. She wasn't signing. No one was signing for her. They didn't even tell no, me. No, he was signing to me like because he didn't want to yell. I think she's blind in oh, the Oh, you story. knew that was coming. Yeah, oh, that's she, why he was going. She really... wasn't deaf. She still could hear your jokes. Yeah, but he didn't know it was to Why her? put her up front? Who the fuck puts her up? Put, point her towards the speaker and Maybe tell her it's up sh- front. Just tell her. You're right up front. Great. You... It's a good point. I saw Stevie Wonder sat in front of me on a plane once. And I just usually I sleep on planes, and the entire time I'm like, he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't know where the fuck he's going. <laughs> like, can you imagine being blind on tour, like Ronnie Millsap or like Stevie Wonder? Like, welcome to Sydney, Australia, Stevie. And it's like you're just in fucking just in San Jose at the Shark Tank. <laughs> My shame, <laughs> no meet and greet because you don't want to tip off the accent. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want anybody to pick up on the accent like did they talk weird here Steve we went to South uh, South Africa and we had uh, one of the Jacksons uh, Jermaine Jackson in the seat in front of me and I had the weirdest moment man I, I, it was middle of the night flying flying to Europe and and I go in the bathroom and I come back and I, and and my girl was in the in the aisle and I had to step over Jermaine Jackson and I, and I when I bent over his seat so I was literally Michael. he was sleeping he was wow nice by the way that was I'm, nice you can't sleep on Uncle Dan by the way he and I was this close to his, my face was this close to his face while he was sleeping. <laughs> and I had this weird moment. <laughs> like, I just wanted to go, good night, Jermaine. <laughs> Thank you. I had this weird oh. moment. It would have been so good. Just, I'd have gotten my ass kicked and been thrown off the plane, but I thought, it would have been so funny. You should open a show with that story. <laughs> like, that's a nice story. 
You're flying to a place to make money. There's a Jackson that's not been arrested for d- <laughs> right. awful it, behavior. The good Jackson. Really the good Jackson. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you do all the things that you send much? I don't want to declare that song. All right. So Christopher Titus Podcast. Go to iTunes and get the Christopher Titus Podcast. Do you have an Amazon link or anything like that? Uh, yeah. If you go click the Amazon link. Well, click to your Amazon link first. But go to the Why Amazon link. say that? Dear JJ, sorry I'm no Sarah Brady. One lady bought like $6,000 of TVs. Oh, Her wow. name was Sarah Brady, nice. so we always say, you got to go Sarah Brady big. JJ, I'm no Sarah Brady, but I did buy the following. One, the new Bear Lake Naked Lady CD. Ugh. They're still making CDs? Whatever, bro. I, you know, it's Richie Zampetti. He's cool. He's doing it. Uh, one, <laughs> Kevin Smith's book. Kevin Smith was very good to me starting out in the podcast. Tough shit advice from a fat, lazy slob who did good. Great title. One, Kindle book. I know why the aliens don't land. Thanks for the show. Uh, laughing my ass off all the time. Thank you, Richie Zampetti. The Village is in Florida. Go see Chris Titus. Yep. Or Richie, uh, thank you very much. Go to jmore.com. Off the Hook Comedy Club this weekend. Click the Amazon banner. Our plugs are bashing each other's heads in. <laughs> like robot <laughs> wars. 